The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, Now is for you. You have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Who are you looking at? Who are you looking at? This man in the parable Jesus spoke, very clear. I, 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 me, 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 my, 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 my. In fact, it's a little bit of Jesus humor if you get it. Lots of references. How am I doing? I will build my bigger barns. I will do this. I will do that. He's looking at himself. Years ago, I lived with and worked with a man from Austria. We were doing campus ministry work at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. His name was Martin Steinbreitner, and Steinbreitner was from Austria. Very bright, very talented young person, but also a real persnickety fellow with what he didn't like about us Americans. Oh, he let us know. One thing he didn't like is he didn't like that we always sang Edelweiss to him, you know, from The Sound of Music, the Austrian song. Oh, he hated that. He said, listen, that's not an Austrian song. That was made in Hollywood by Rodgers and Hammerstein. And we would just sing it all the more. Edelweiss, Edelweiss. <laughs> Drove him crazy. It was great. The other thing he didn't like, he didn't like the way Americans left cupboards and cabinets open. Oh, it would drive him crazy. I think he needed a life. But anyway... He'd see an open cabinet, an open drawer, and say, why can't you Americans shut your cabinets and shut your doors? And then I remember a third thing, something that really caught me by surprise because I hadn't noticed it. But when he came to America and was working and living here in America, one of the things he noticed was that we Americans will sometimes talk to each other without looking at each other. You know, we're having a conversation. I'm over here doing this or that, and so and so's over there doing something else. And oh, he just couldn't stand that. And thank goodness, of course, it was the days before smartphones. Can you imagine today? Everybody's doing their thing here. He said, Look at me, he said. If you're going to talk to me, could you please show the courtesy of looking at me? I thought he was overdoing it a bit. And then ever since, I've noticed how that can be a habit. And it's not just a habit in our conversations with one another, but most especially, it can have to do with our relationship with God. You know, it's very easy for us here in church, elsewhere, to talk to God without looking at him. What does that mean? Well. We all hopefully talk to God and pray during our busy day as we're at work or driving the car, or working out, whatever. But every once in a while, we need literally to turn to God and to look at him as we pray. Otherwise, who are we looking at? Well, the parable reminds us. I, 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 I me, 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 my, 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 my. That's 
the normal way we turn in our minds and hearts. And at least once or twice a day, we need to turn to God and look at him. And it might sound easy, but it's not. We're all in the habit of every thoughts back to us, how are we doing, how are we feeling. It's not easy to take even two or three minutes in the morning to turn to God and to look at him. But we need to do that. Again, it doesn't have to be long or complicated, but every one of us, at the beginning of the day, at the end of our day, to turn and face the Lord and look at him and nothing else. You know a day is going to come, no matter how busy we get, no matter how rich we get, no matter what we accomplish in this life. A day is going to come when everything is taken away from us, all of our big barns and big harvests and big crops, all of our possessions and hopes and dreams. On that day of judgment, every one of us finally will have to look at God. And we will look at God on our judgment day in one of two ways. Either we will have cultivated the habit of looking at him during our simple daily prayers, simple daily prayers. And when we finally see him face to face, we will say, ah, it is good to see you again, Lord. Or we've turned away, we've turned away, too busy, too bothered. I, 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 me, 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 my, my, my. And then on that great day, that great getting up day, there will be nowhere else to look. There he will be, Jesus, face to face. The church has a huge, beautiful catechism filled with wonderful teachings, big section on prayer. And in this big section on prayer and all kinds of good teaching on prayer, the church of all things starts that whole section of the catechism with a little tiny story that happened when St. John Vianney was parish priest of a small, small parish in France. And St. John Vianney saw this humble farmer, very poor farmer, sitting in church all the time, sitting there. And St. John Vianney went up to this farmer in church and he asked them, what are you doing? And that humble farmer, we have no idea what his name is, that humble farmer replied, and his reply now is at the beginning of the entire Catholic Church's teaching on prayer because it's so perfectly encapsulated what prayer is all about, what life is all about. St. John Vianney asked that farmer, what are you doing? And the farmer said, I look at God. God looks at me.